now that CentOS 7 has been installed, we can start configuring our server. I'll click and log in. Now that I'm logged in, I'll go to Applications and open up a terminal. In the terminal window, I've changed the font size by going to Edit, Preferences, Profiles, editing the profile, and changing the font size to size 16. This will make it easier to see during the video tutorial. I'll close that. The first thing I'm going to need to do is sue for root access. So I'll type in sue, press enter, and then put in my root user password. Now I have root access. Next, I'll type in the word hostname, and this is a variable name that will tell me the host name of my server. This is also my server name. You can see that the server name right now, or the host name, is localhost.localdomain. This is the default. If we're going to set up a server and make it an open VPN server, and maybe we'll put up some other services that we'll do with this server, we're going to want to have a host name for our server. So what we need to do is edit the host name file. So what I'll do is I'll type nano, which is text editor, and we'll go into the etc directory, root etc, and the host name file and we'll change the name localhost.localdomain to the name of our server. So I'll call it Dan's CentOS dash S3 for server three. That looks pretty good to me. I'll hit control X, Y to accept the changes and then press enter. Okay, so now I've edited the hostname file. I'm also going to do an up arrow and edit the hosts file. So I'll change that. Now it's nano root etc forward slash hosts. I'll press enter. And you can see here this is my host file. My host file maps IP addresses to names. And you can see that right now the loopback address 127.0.0.1 is set to localhost, localhost.localdomain, localhost4, all these names. So I'll just move the cursor over using the keyboard and I'll put in here Dan's CentOS S3. I believe that was the name I gave it. And then I'll even do that. This colon colon one is for IPv6. I can do that here as well if I want to. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll just push this over one. All right, that looks good. Control X to exit, Y to save, and enter. So now that looks good. If I want to double check my uh, edits, I can always go back in, take a look. Okay, that looks good. And I'll do the same thing here. That looks good. For these changes to take effect, I'm going to reboot my system, and when it comes back online, I'll run the host name command again to see if the name has changed. So I'll reboot. And once the system's rebooted, I will start the video again. Okay, the system rebooted and I logged back in. So now I'll sue for root access again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an if config command to take a look at those interfaces. Now the network interfaces, my ethernet ports, are ENO167 and then this one's ENO335. And these names are pretty weird. Um, I would prefer it if these names for my network interfaces were something like ETH0 and ETH1. And I'm not, I'm not quite sure why in uh, this VMware player and, and CentOS 7, why it's not seeing these interfaces with the correct um, type of numbering association. But I did some searching online and I found out a way where we could change these and get them back to ETH0 and ETH1. So let's do that. Um, so what I'll do is just type clear here. To do that, what we can do is we can do a nano and edit the etc default grub file. 
So grub is our bootloader. We'll hit enter. We can edit this line right here, grub command line Linux. And what we'll do is I'm gonna go all the way to the end. So I'm using the arrow on my keyboard and just keep going all the way to the end. And I'm going to append some text to the end. Now I wanna do it right before this quotation mark. So I'm going right here and this is what I'm going to put in. I'm gonna type in net dot if names so net dot if names equals zero space bios dev name equals zero so there it is net dot if names equals zero space bios dev name equals zero I have an extra space in here I don't want that so there we are. That looks pretty good. So now what I'll do is I'll just do a control X to exit, Y to accept the changes, and hit enter. So now that we've edited the Etsy default grub file, we need to create a new grub configuration file. Now to do that, we can use this program that's built into Linux, and that is grub2- MK config grub2 make config and I typed it wrong here so it's grub2 dash MK config space dash O and we have to provide the path to the bootloader configuration file which is in boot grub2 forward slash grub dot CFG that looks pretty good, so I'll hit enter. All right, it looks like it's generating a grub configuration file. It looks like it worked. And now what I need to do is reboot. And while I'm rebooting the system, I will pause the video and then I'll log back in and start the video again. All right, I logged back in. Let's see if it worked. Terminal. I'll type in if config, and you can see now I have eth1 and eth0, and eth0 is picking up the IP address from the network, and eth1 is going to be our LAN segment, and we're going to configure that. So now that we have the network interfaces reading the way that we want them, now it's time to configure them, and so that's the next thing that we're gonna do. Now to do that, I'll just type clear, Now to do that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change directories here. We're gonna go into root etc sysconfig network dash scripts. So we'll go in here and I'll type an ls command and you can see that the files are in here. The green files are scripts and these black files are configuration files, they're uh, text files. And you can see that there is a configuration file for ifcfg-eno167736. Now, this is our configuration file to manually configure that network interface. Now, this is the network interface that we changed to eth0. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to change the name of this file. So I'll highlight this, I'll right click, copy that. And what I'll do is I'll say move, and then I'll paste the name of the file. There it is, and then a space, and then the name that I want it to be, which is ifcfg-eth0. And that should rename the file. Now you can see here that I'm getting a permission denied, and that's because I forgot to sue for root access. I'm still in student access now, student user access. So we have to do that. So I'll quickly sue and put in the password. And now I'll try that command again. MV space, I'll paste it in. And the new name, ifcfg-eth0. 
that should have renamed the file. I'll do an ls command to verify. And sure enough, there it is. So now I have a configuration file for my ETH0 interface, but I don't see one here for ETH1. I have ifconfig or ifcfg-lo for my loopback interface, which the loopback interface goes nowhere. That's not essentially something I'm going to configure. I'm going to be configuring, I need ETH1. So what I'll do is, I'll clear this again. And what I'll do is, is I'll copy ETH0, the ETH0 file, and I'll copy it to another file named ifcfg-eth1. So now I should have two files, and I'm going to need to edit both files and put in the settings that I want for each network interface. Do an ls command, sure enough, there they are, eth0 and eth1. So now it's time to edit those files. I'm going to edit the eth1 file first. So, so here is the eth1 file that I just opened up in Nano, and I'm going to need to edit this. Now the hardware address is your MAC address, and if I want to leave this address in there, then I need to make sure that it matches the MAC address for eth1. Now if I go up here to my VMware player, and I go to settings, I can actually go into this second network adapter here on the LAN segment and click Advanced, and you can see here is the MAC address for that network adapter. So if I want to keep this hardware address, I'm going to need this. So I'll do a Control C, Cancel, Cancel, and right here I can paste it. Isn't that amazing? You can paste right from there and and so if you want to keep that hardware address in there, it should match the actual network interface. Or you can just get rid of that line altogether. I'm going to leave it, and I'll just make sure that the hardware address matches right now. I'm also going to add some extra lines here. So right here, I'll hit Enter, and I'm going to put in device equals and in between quotation marks, eth1. The boot protocol here, I'm going to change that to static or none. And I'm going to add a line after here, IP ADDR equals 192.168.10. And then netmask equals 255.255.255.0. And then I'm going to get rid of the next three lines. Peer routes, I'll get rid of. Peer DNS, I'll get rid of. And default route, I'll get rid of. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, in class, we got rid of this UUID. So I'm going to do the same thing here since I got rid of it in class. And then the name ENO167336, we're going to change that to ETH1. And then on boot, we want this interface to come up. Sure, on boot, yes. So this looks pretty good. This looks solid. So I'll do a Control X and a Y and enter, and that has now been configured. So now I'll edit ETH0. Now for ETH0, it's the same situation. I want to make sure that the hardware address matches the actual hardware address of the NIC. So I'll go up here, and I'll go to Settings, and this is the first network interface. And I'll make sure I have that selected. Go to Advanced, and you can see here 8DB4. And if we look over there, we'll see if it matches 8db4. Cancel, cancel, 8db4, look it matches, that's great. Alright, so then type equals Ethernet, I'll put in device equals, and then in between quotation marks, eth0. Boot proto DHCP, I can leave that, I'll leave all of this, and I'll change the name, 
to eth0, and I'll get rid of this UUID. Control X, Y, and Enter. So now both of those have been configured. So now that I've configured both of my interfaces, I want to get rid of the network manager. Now the network manager is this auto tool that automatically manages my network interfaces, but since we've manually configured our network interfaces, we might as well just rely on our own configurations and not use this network manager. So to get rid of the network manager, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in systemctl stop network manager, all one word, and notice a capital N and a capital M, and that should stop the network manager. And then I'm going to do an up arrow, and then I'll change it to disable. So systemctl disable network manager, that looks good too, and that should disable it. And then I'm going to do a service network restart to restart the network. Now notice it's actually restarting the network verse via, it says via systemctl, so I could have used systemctl to restart my network too. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to reboot the system, and when the system comes back up, I shouldn't see this network manager tool here in the upper corner, but I should have my, I should have control, complete manual control over my network interfaces. So let's see if that works. I'll reboot and then continue the video after the reboot. So the system finished rebooting and I logged in and opened up a terminal window and let's see what's going on with our network interfaces. I'll type if config and you can see there's eth1 with the 192.168.10.1 address. Looks like that's up and if I scroll up you can see there's ETH0 and it's picked up an IP address from the DHCP server and so I'm also online. So everything looks pretty good. I will do one other thing and that is ping Yahoo to make sure I have connectivity. I do. So that looks good. And if we look up at the top, you do not see the network manager GUI tool here. So we have complete control now over the network interfaces. If I want to take the interface up or down, I sue for root access. And now I can do an if config eth1, let's say down, to take down the interface. I can also do an if config eth0 down, and that should take down the interface. We'll take a look if config and you can see that all I see now is my loopback interface and then I'll bring those interfaces back up if config eth0 up and if config eth1 up and then if config and you can see the interfaces are back up so that's nice so now it's time to install OpenVPN and I'll begin doing that in the next video tutorial